Hello and welcome to another edition of uh, PCHEM Lab Screencast. I'm Jeff Yarger and today we're going to briefly go over um, some more pulse field gradient spin echo uh, diffusion data. Um, specifically, I'm going to start here by showing you some of the data that we've collected in VNMRJ using a DIPSY type pulse sequences, a stimulated echo a pulse sequence, but it all still uses the same Stutzkel-Tanner diffusion type equation. So the raw data is a free induction decay, so it's an intensity as a function of time. However, in class, uh, we've already processed the data for you, done Fourier transforms, and give you a spectrum where the spectrum is given to you basically in, in parts per million. So it's a chemical shift proton NMR spectrum, and we're looking at it here in VNMRJ. Even though the data I give you uh, for the class is the ASCII formatted or text formatted version of this data so that you don't have to um, learn processing of NMR data at this point. We really want the focus to be on, on uh, data analysis, error analysis, etc. However, I want to take a few seconds and show you some of the power of NMR. So what we've done is make a sample of deuterated chloroform the chloroform is this little peak right here. Uh, we've included a referencing agent, which is the peak at zero that we've set to zero, which is tetramethylsilane. And then you can see there's a whole bunch of different peaks in here. Um, and these all correspond to that we have a complicated mixture of solutes. And it includes naphth naphthalene, anthracene, uh, water, benzene, cyclohexane, uh, methylene chloride, DMSO, acetone, and 1,4-dioxane, all in this sample. And we can determine the diffusion coefficient individually of these different solutes within the solvent, which is chloroform. And so just to show you some of uh, these molecules, if we go way over here to this side, which is the aromatic region, kind of blow that region up and, and look, now is where we'll see an anthracene. This is uh, um, uh, part of the anthracene molecule. This right here is uh, naphthalene. This is anthracene and naphthalene kind of mixed together. Um, here you have it at uh, 7.35 to 7.36 is benzene. This is the chloroform, the solvent. If we go back out and look at the wide view, you know, we have uh, this peak here at, at, at 5.3 uh, ppm, which is um, uh, methylene chloride, uh, dimethylchlorine, and uh, um, and then we can, so on and so on. We can assign all of these molecules, and it's usually pretty easy to find which one's water. We can blow up, and we can see, ah, uh, you know, here's carbon satellites. That's tetramethylsilane. There's some small carbon satellites here, so that's probably um, cyclohexane. There's no carbon satellites around this. Peak. So this is probably, this is the water peak. It's the only uh, proton environment that, that uh, where the protons aren't attached to a carbon and then everything else should have carbon satellites because of that. Uh, so we can go through and, and basically assign the spectrum. Primarily it's simple enough just based on its chemical shift. We can save this data in ASCII format um, and provide it for you on the web, which is what we do. And uh, I'll pull that in and so I put this on Blackboard for those that are in Chemistry 343. It's under um, Course Content, Experimental Material, Experiment Number 1. And not only do I provide the uh, sample 2 and 3 data, the one I've shown you is 2 and 3 is a mixture of solutes and water, I also provide a list of each student and, and which molecule has been assigned to you and then the upcoming lab reports. For those that aren't in the class, you can go to downloads and I provide sample two and three data here. If you click on it and download it, I've done it here, you'll see that the it consists of um, you know several files, uh, two, four, six, seven files of um, of data. Each one of these looks basically the same. It's a single string of numbers for, with a header that describes how you're going to create your x-axis. So this gives you the chemical shift from the far left point to the right point and how many points are in between, which is uh, 64k data points here. Um, and then it gives you the intensity data and you can again uh, create your own x-axis here. Um, these 
uh, DAC values, which is what this last bit is called, uh, in Varian it goes from 0 to 32k, um, which is a linear scale for the gradient. And so there we can use that just like a percent gradient to calibrate. And so I give also uh, a set of NMR parameters, and it's in a rich text format that just give the basic NMR parameters. This was collected on 500 megahertz. Varian two millisecond gradient pulse, which is the small delta, 75 milliseconds between pulses, which is big delta, eight uh, accumulations, 10 seconds between each of the accumulations for relaxation and a 5,000 hertz spectral width, and then what the sample consists of. Um, and that's done for both you know, sample number two and sample number three, which is an aqueous sample. It's in D2O with, with similar uh, solute molecules and the parameters that were used were, were identical. And so we can, uh, based on past screencasts, you should be able to read that into um, your software package. We're going to just show, for example, Kaleidograph. So I was able to create an x-axis. I was able to do that by, you know, making uh, a series, a data series. Um, I'll pull that onto the screen. So I was able to make a data series that, uh, you know, makes that. I was able to import each of the data sets. They were DAC values between 1,000 and 30,000. Um, I converted that to a percent gradient knowing that 32K, uh, 32,768 is the maximum. So I just divided by that times 100 and then I got a gradient squared. So this makes it similar to the Bruker data as far as my analysis. Then I used a Cmax term and took the LN of those Cmax terms to give me um, my LN of uh, uh, the logarithm of the, the signal intensity uh, at its maximum. And, and so I can do that for all these different peaks, benzene, naphthalene. So uh, naphthalene we just saw was a, was a quartet. If we come in here and look at one of these peaks um, and blow up around, say, this peak, you'll see. So, so I'm able to pull it, the intensity from each of these four positions you know, in naphthalene. So in a sense, I could get between here, these four, I could get four different curves, um, which should all give the same diffusion um, information. And I can do it for anthracene and all the different molecules here. I can use the solvent, which in this case is chloroform, to get my uh, gradient squared uh, in Tesla squared per media and recalculate that. Now I'm able to plot all this data and uh, determine the diffusion coefficients. And, and keep in mind, like, um, you know, the standard plots we're making are the gradient squared versus, and we can just you know, select a bunch of these just to show um, uh, that we can plot a lot of uh, this data. Now, what I want to do is quickly uh, show you a subset of this data where I've taken the gradient squared and I've taken the ln um, of benzene, one of the peaks of naphthalene, and one of the peaks of anthracene. And, and this is what some of the data would look like. And then we can linear curve fitting this. I'm not going to show you the error analysis part of this right now for just so. And you can see that I can plot this up. I can get the, the slopes and I'm going to be able to use those slopes to determine that diffusion coefficient. However, I also want to show you some intuition here. We expect benzene to be the fastest molecule, then naphthalene, and then anthracene to be the slowest just based on size. These are getting, you know, one fused ring, two fused ring, three. We expect that the the larger one to diffuse slower within the same solvent. And so, but it's kind of hard to look at this because the starting point, the initial signal intensity, is different for all of these. And so, it's you can determine if the slope is. Uh, greater or smaller right here, but sometimes it's nice to normalize this. And what we can normalize it to is this B value. This is the LN of the signal if no gradient was on it. So I can do that. So now that I have that data, I can come over here and with a formula entry, I can make a column that is the signal divided by the signal at zero, which are each you know, 24.393 is right here, 22.8, 
and 23.3 or each of these and then I can use that to calculate the ln now over s0 and so now when I plot that Now you can see it's nicely normalized as well so that I can easily see that the fastest decaying molecule or the, the largest slope is benzene, then naphthalene, which is a little slower, and anthracene's a lot slower, et cetera. So it gives me a, you know my what I expect as an intuition, and I'm able to plug these in knowing the delta values to calculate an exact um, diffusion coefficient. So I can do that for all the different molecules. So for example, benzene here, you know, I can plug in the slope and I know the gammas and I know it's a two millisecond um, little delta, 75 millisecond big delta. I know what gamma is and I can calculate, you know, diffusion coefficients, etc. So I hope this gets you started on looking at these complex solute uh, mixtures in chloroform and, and D2O and shows you kind of the power of NMR for determining multiple diffusion coefficients of multiple solutes within a solvent.